Hello and welcome. I'm Joanne Bjornsson, Senior Vice President of Human Resources at Lidos and Chair of Washington Execs HR Council. And I want to welcome you to the latest in our video series, Talent at the Core. This series invites subject matter experts to share their perspectives on various challenges, trends, and best practices in areas related to people. In today's episode, Building Culture, Energizing the Workforce, we've invited two members of our HR Council, and I would like to quickly introduce them. Karen McGarry serves as ICF's Chief Human Resources Officer, where she's responsible for all aspects of HR. Heather Wilson is Senior Vice President, Human Resources for SAIC's Defense and Civilian Sector, where she is responsible for the entire employee life cycle. Thanks to each of our panelists for joining us today. Karen, let's start with you. We've all seen dynamic changes in the labor market over the past three years. Looking back from 2019 to today, how would you say that your workforce has changed? Thanks, Joanne. You know, it's interesting. I mean, we've always had a pretty geographically dispersed workforce and we've had some telework and remote work arrangements, you know, already in place. And so for us, we had a pretty smooth transition to 100 percent remote working um, back in March of 2020. And, you know, ICF is a pretty values driven organization. And so, you know, naturally our employees commitment and hard work and resilience really helped us weather uh, the past two years, but really grow and thrive. And so, in fact, since the beginning of the pandemic, our workforce has actually expanded by seven and a half percent. And we continue to see meaningful growth, um, you know, with frankly record-breaking hiring volume um, through Q1 of this year. So, you know, with what you've heard me describe, you can imagine embracing a hybrid first work model that preserves the flexibility and the personalization and technology that we've used over the last two years. Um, and reflects the reality that many of our employees were, you know, relocated or or even hired outside of core office locations during the pandemic was really critical for us. And um, we've actually just recently started to return to some in-person work um, last month. So it's still early, um, but so far we're hearing how much our employees have enjoyed reconnecting with each other. And, you know, as you can imagine, in many cases, meeting each other face to face for the first time. And I think it says a lot about ICF's culture that diversity and inclusion were a, a large part of our return to office strategy. Um, you know, we've really equipped our people managers with a robust toolkit to lead hybrid teams and make sure everyone's voices are heard no matter where they're sitting. And, um, and so through all of it, you know, our employees' priorities really haven't changed. Um, I, employees at ICF are really part of ICF because their intrinsic value system aligns to the work we do. And, you know, as I mentioned before, our corporate values. So things like well-being and inclusion and career growth and impact are all important aspects of our employee value proposition, and they always have been. And so, um, you know, that said, we, we have continued to advance each of these things. And so with, you know, well-being in particular, you know, we did put a much bigger emphasis on things like mental health and family support benefits and burnout prevention and we launched a new well-being program, a, pl a specific platform that we brought in to sort of bring all of our well-being resources together in one place for our employees. Um, on the inclusion front, you know, we really doubled down on our uh, DNI efforts in 2020. Um, we launched global employee community networks. That's our version of your affinity resource groups. And about a quarter of our workforce belongs to one of the eight of our um, ECNs. And, you know, I will say our employees are certainly more forthright with what they believe in, uh, particularly when it comes to social justice issues and what they feel like they need to be successful. Um, and so, you know, with that, I think has come some expectations for faster career progression and more internal mobility and work life balance. And having this ECN channels really provided a powerful um, way for us to be able to communicate with them and them with us on what those needs are. Um, you know, on the career growth front, we launched a new onboarding program that really emphasizes career growth from day one. Um, and we've also brought on a new performance management um, platform that is really um, designed for much more frequent feedback and engagement with our employees. And then, you know, the last item I mentioned was impact. And, you know, of course, our employees take tremendous pride in our purpose and our client-driven work. And 
Um, and so as such, they're really highly engaged in our corporate citizen pro citizenship program and charitable donations are fully matched. We incentivize our employees to volunteer for the causes they value. Um, so, you know, in, in, in to summarize, you know, in large part, it's, it's a different type of conversation, but um, for us, it's pretty anchored in, in what it's always been anchored in, which is our values and, um, you know, what our employees needs are. Great. Heather, let's switch over to you. Given ongoing market challenges, how would you say the dialogues change within your leadership team about the workforce? Yeah, thanks for the question. You know, I'll have to say just listening to what Karen was sharing, you know, so much of the, the conversation and the dialogue, it, it's very similarly focused. Uh, we are uh, very much a values-based organization as well. And, and we have also very much thrived uh, through uh, the, the recent uh, year a couple of years uh, in the pandemic. And, and like uh, many companies, we've learned a lot uh, in the last couple of years. And the dialogue has absolutely changed uh, among the leadership team as we're thinking about the workforce. Um, you know, it, it's very clear that people are reevaluating their priorities, their expectations at both work and at home. And um, our leaders really started to recognize this early in the pandemic. And for that reason, put into place the development and execution of a strategy that really focused on what we could do to prioritize the well-being of our employees and with a focus on the overall employee experience. What we had to deal with, which was a little different than what Karen described, is that due to the type of work that we uh, perform, not all of our employees were able to just hunker down at home. Uh, a lot of our workforce had to be in the office. They had to continue to show up every day in the face of uncertainty to continue to perform the mission of our, of our customers. And we're just so proud of, of all of our employees, uh, regardless if they had to continue thriving in the office or if they had to make that shift to working in more of a remote hybrid environment. And the point that we really wanted to, to take from this was to recognize that there was not any one strategy for the future, but we really needed to recognize the importance of meeting our employees really where they were and, and putting the bend on well-being and wrapping that around recognizing the importance of the whole person, both at home, uh, at work, and if they're thriving in their lives, they're going to thrive here at the office and, and in the mission that they're doing for our customers. And so that was really the underpinning of how we started to think about and shift the dialogue at SAIC. As we got into this, what we started to really realize is that the frontline leaders um, became such a critical aspect of the employee experience. And we uh, had to put quite a bit of focus on the development and upskilling of our people leaders to help them rethink, reimagine how to lead employees in a, a hybrid environment, in a more dispersed environment than ever before. Um, and, and that took a lot of work and effort and intentionality around that and had to really have them think around how they would prioritize employee flexibility, well-being and inclusion. Uh, we uh, put frontline leaders through more than 5,000 hours of development, uh, very intentional development around leading in a hybrid environment. Uh, similar to Karen, we created a toolkit for our leaders that gave them um, some, some resources to help them be, again, intentional around establishing and developing relationships with, uh, with their teams. Um, and, you know, with all of that, uh, with all of that effort, you know, we're really proud of the feedback that we've received from our employees, the way they've recognized the shift and the way we're meeting them where they are and meeting them and, 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 uh, you know, introducing things that are supporting them and the whole person. Um, we expanded our flexible uh, work arrangements to introduce a four day work week uh, and other alternate work schedules. Um, we uh, more formalized uh, the opportunity for remote and hybrid work that we, you know, were all thrown into at the beginning of the pandemic, but that's now become more of the norm. Um, we also really, um, again, recognize the need 
for our employees to to have time to support uh, their families in times of uncertainty and expanded our family leave benefits from 40 hours to 240 hours. And this allows them to support not only their, you know, their maybe child or spouse or partner, but also their parents uh, with subsidized uh, backup care and elder care as well. And then just one final note, uh, we also are very proud of the fact that we held our medical costs flat for a second year in a row. So when you really look at all of that and you think about uh, the intentionality around recognizing the shift, what the employees were expecting and getting ahead of that, um, we're really, really proud of what we were able to accomplish. And it certainly is reflected in the feedback that we've been receiving by the employees. Um, and so just, you know, really proud of that. Great, fantastic insights. So one last question for each of you. What would you say your company is doing that is new or different to build culture and energize your workforce? Karen, we'll start with you. Sure. You know, it's so interesting to listen to, uh, you know, Heather's comments. It's like so much of the same is on the list. Um, and that whole concept of really meeting your employees where you are is so important. And we've all had to pivot and evolve towards that. You know, I think for, you know, for us at ICF, with, really with these market conditions, um, our internal, you know, needs, um, our leaders really have had to start thinking much more strategically about the talent we have, the talent we need, and what, as I mentioned, the changing needs of both of those. And so in collaboration with our business leaders, we have a really robust people strategy that's actually embedded in our business strategy. So we're really leading the firm with this much more people first um concept and it's you know it's designed and um, you know to attract and retain our our workforce but you know some specific focus areas include sustaining and evolving our culture you know in this ever changing environment you just have to be um constantly thinking about that um we are reimagining all of our talent experience programs. So, you know, everything has to shift in this hybrid environment. And we have to think differently about delivery and how we do those things. Advancing total rewards. So all of the things we talked about with um, uh, well-being and, you know, the, some of the benefit offerings, but even more importantly, how are, how are our compensation programs working in the market? And what does competitive pay look like in today's environment? And really, really thinking about that. Of course, we're op operationalizing inclusion and continue to do that. And, and with, with no doubt, major investments in talent attraction and engagement, you know, um, obviously talent acquisition is, is quite the competitive space these days. And we've really um, done quite a bit to invest in that model uh, to, to help us. So, you know, the, we're really tackling this as a big a business issue and, you know, not an HR issue, which is lovely to, um, to be a part of, uh, quite frankly, as a head of HR. Um, so it's, it's really an exciting time. Great. Heather, what about you? Yes, yeah, so, you know, we're doing a number of things to build culture and energize our workforce. And one of the things I'd really like to highlight, because it has really been a catalyst for many of the, the changes that we've been making across the enterprise, it's been uh, through a feedback channel that we implemented um, a couple of years ago through our annual culture survey. Um, and and the, the thing about the survey is that the it's not just a, a one way dialogue where, you know, we're uh, getting the feedback from employees, we're taking it in and saying, oh, that's interesting, and then doing nothing about it. The things that I described in the previous comments, those changes were a direct reflection of the feedback that we received from our employees during the 2021 uh, Employee Culture Survey. And the company took uh, intentional action based on the feedback from the employees. And so the, the way that we're really building the culture and keeping our workforce energized is by them knowing that they have a direct uh, feedback loop to the, the leadership of the company, that their voices matter, um, and that, uh, that that is something that we're committed to. And so the types of topics that we are, um, are engaging with them on are around well-being, empowerment, inclusion, customer, and community, and, and how they're making that connection in their employee experience and, and what's going well in areas that we need to consider to enhance that and retention and collaboration. And so, you know, it's been it's been a really positive experience. We just learned through our most recent survey um, that our employees have scored us 
above benchmark, exceed benchmark in well-being, empowerment, inclusion, customer community, employee experience, and retention and collaboration. And so we're super proud of that. And we know that we've got continued progress to make to ensure that we continue to be the employer of choice. Um, and so I would say that is just one way that we are really ensuring that we keep our employees energized. I will also just mention that our employee resource groups, we have a very active um, and employee participation with our employee resource groups, and they really um, are a, a, an avenue uh, for us to energize and rally around, um, you know, various cultural initiatives that we are um, really, you know, driving throughout the organization. And so very, very proud of those organizations and the leaders for those groups as well. So there's a, a whole host of things that we're doing, but those are just a couple that I'm you know, particularly proud of and will highlight today. Great. Well, that concludes this episode of our Talent at the Core series. Again, I want to thank each of our panelists for joining us today and for sharing the really valuable insights and sharing their perspectives from each of their companies.